Alright guys, welcome to a new edition of Station Tutorials. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the new Roto Brush in After Effects CS5. Uh, it's a pretty amazing tool. I was blown away when I first used it. I'm going to show you guys how I made a shot work that we missed while we were shooting No Homo. This is a shot that I created comping a couple different shots. I'm going to show you now how we did this using the new Roto Brush tool in CS5. It's, it's a pretty amazing tool and uh, it's kind of scary how easy it is to use. All right, let's get started. This shot actually doesn't even exist. This is created from two different separate shots that were comped together to make it look like Brett was passing in front. It's not even real. It's completely fake. Let me show you how I did it. A uh, little bit of problem solving can go a long way here. The first shot we had was like this while we were shooting something with Brett in another location. And the second shot was simply Brett. So what I ended up doing here is, let's jump into After Effects. So why don't we just jump right in and we'll start a new composition. DVC Pro HD 720 at 24 frames a second. Okay. Now even though this was shot on the 5D, I'm editing this at 720 because our timeline for this video was mixed with some overcrank from the HVX. Instead of editing everything at 1080, I'm editing my timeline at 720 because we upload everything at 720 anyway, so it just didn't make sense to go the other way with it. So instead of blowing up your overcrank footage, you're actually bringing down your 1080p footage from the 5D, allowing you to punch in and get away with some things that you normally wouldn't want to do if you were going the other way. Move this to the top, just like to keep things organized. First of all, we'll add Brett to the comp. That will serve as our background plate. Let me jump back and quickly explain what we have going on here for the layers. First of all, we got our background layer, which is just Brett walking. On top of that is the layer of the guy watching Brett pass. And as you can see, he's actually over the top of Brett. Because I wanted to keep the... I wanted to keep the background looking the most real as possible as Brett was walking, so I decided to use Brett's background instead of using his background, because if you were to use his background with Brett walking in the foreground, there may be some odd parallax here between the wall and Brett, and I wanted to stay away from that. So what I did in turn then was after comping him back over the top, I just added another layer of Brett rotoed out back over the top. So when you have all three together, it's really just the wall layer with Brett, and then the layer in between of the guy without the shirt, and then another overlaying layer of Brett. So it looks as natural as possible. Um, because Brett's the main subject here. If he was the main subject, then yes, I would use the wall for him. But I, I don't know how much of a difference it would have made. This is just the way I went about doing it, and it seemed to work rather well. Okay, let's jump back into our new comp. We have our background plate with Brett walking. Then we will take the layer of the guy standing and put it over the top. What you do now for this roto brush, it's quite the amazing tool here, just double click on the layer and it'll bring it up here in the viewer. Select the roto brush. You can adjust the size by holding the Apple key or the command key and dragging your mouse in or out. It can get rather big, but I don't know why you'd ever want... Yeah, I don't know. You know, just a reasonable size. Basically, you're just going over and selecting what you want it to keep. And then by holding Alt, your little plus will turn into a negative here, and just take away. And just take away and take away. There we go. Okay, now now you can go through either frame by frame, going one frame at a time, making sure you're keeping everything, and then, you know, brush it in, grab that, okay, get rid of that. And here, this is going to be a lot easier roto than if we had multiple colors and things going on, obviously. So if I was to just, you know, play this out by hitting spacebar, it sticks with him pretty good there. 
Um, yeah, and then what you can do is go by, go back through frame by frame, and you know, f just fix any little flaws that there are. So like, grab that, you know, grab that. All right. Um, keep going through. Grab, grab his arm back there. Uh, grab that. Okay. Grab that. This is a, this was this was fairly simple. There's another tutorial that I'll be doing where we had to roto out Timmy and the cell phones in the uh, 1950 skit that we did where the phones and the guy from the future were in color and everything else was in black and white. That was a lot more complicated because you, we were several colors going on. There were things passing in front. This was fairly simple in comparison to that. So once you have the selection you want and you're satisfied, uh, make your way over to the refine mat. Play with the smoothing and the feathering and the choke and kind of get what you're looking for so it's not so crunchy around the edges. Just play around with these settings until you get something that's looking good. Everything's going to be different depending on the motion and the colors, but just do the best you can. The decontamination view is a nice feature because as you finesse these, you can see exactly what you're doing to your mat. Okay, now to add our final overlay of Brett, go back to your composition tab. We can just duplicate this layer of Brett here by holding Command D, drag one back on top, double click on this layer, bring out our roto brush again, and grab Brett. Okay, look at that. Boom, look how easy that was. Just drag over it. As Brett goes through frame, you know, just make sure that that's staying with him. And it's, look at that. I mean, it's, it can't get much easier than that. It's scary how easy this is now because you used to have to sit there frame by frame and do this you know literally by hand you used to have to have unbelievable patience and now you can just look at that perfect so you know and you can see what you have by coming back here and now we'll go back to our original comp and boom let's let this render out I mean, that's real quick. We got some rough edges here, but you know, you take time to refine that. Line up the layers a little bit better so he's not looking so far ahead. If you look back to the original, you can still see that he is looking a little far off ahead. If you just drag this, get it as good as you can. Um, this is just a quick, dirty example of how easy it is to use the roto brush in a situation where if you're in a tight bind where you miss a shot like we did, I mean, this, it was, you know, this took me five minutes and look where we're at. So uh, I encourage you to try it yourselves. Let me know, leave me any comments, video responses that, hey, you know, I use this technique for this or the roto brush, you know, I use the roto brush for this. Let me know what you guys have been doing with the roto brush in CS5. And um, yeah, check back for some new tutorials uh, next week. Uh, see you later, guys. Take it easy. No homo, no homo. We're kicking back, watch a TV. I ask if you watch Sex and the City. Oh, did I hear your stomach just moan? We gotta get some meat on those.